Hi, I'm Christopher Jean. This is my 14th season with the festival, and I am in Winter's Tale playing Camillo, and I'm also in Great Expectations playing Wopsle, the Agent P, and others. <laughs> I'm Amy Kimwoski. This is my second season at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. I am playing Hermione in The Winter's Tale, and I'm playing Hong in Viet Gong. Hi, Paul John. I'm in my second season here at Oregon Shakespeare Festival. I'm currently in The Winter's Tale playing Antigonus, and I'm also in Great Expectations playing a million characters. <laughs> uh, Helen Wong is the designer of the costumes for The Winter's Tale. She was also designer of costumes for Secret Love in Peach Blossom Land, which some of you might have seen last year. And uh, she is Chinese from China born in China and now teaches on the East Coast. Um, but I know she was relied on heavily because of her experience with uh, both China but also Stan Lai and the uh, association with Secret Love and Peach Blossom Land and then definitely heavily relied on for our very Chinese take on the Han Dynasty inspired costumes for the Winter's Tale. Well, I was with Chris last year, so what we've worked on, uh, I've worked with Helen twice. And yeah, the first collaboration was with Stan. And we had a bunch of pretty crazy costumes last year, too. <laughs> and she actually took, last year for Secret Love and Peach Blossom Land, she took actors shopping to the Rogue Valley Mall <laughs> to put them in things that they wanted to mm -hmm. wear. Not me, but others got to go to the Rogue Valley Mall. And That's why Kevin Kennerly looks so good in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking to that, when I went into my fittings this year for Winter's Tale, um, there are things that are in the story in terms of 16 years going by, in terms of uh, ad adapting and adopting another culture when Camillo goes from Sicilia to Bohemia and then back to Sicilia that I wanted to highlight in hair, in uh, costume, and she did all of that. Uh, and if I asked for it, she listened very carefully, and then we made decisions from there. For example, uh, in Sicilia, China, we wear our hair in top knots and uh, or top buns. Mm -hmm. And then when I said when I go to uh, Bohemia, at least in the disguise, let's go ahead and take that away so that uh, the young Prince Florizel will not uh, recognize me when I'm in disguise. And then when we got back to Sicilia on that journey back, I said, what if we leave the hair down and what if there are some tendrils hanging down so we're watching him age, we're watching a wilder side of the gentleman and uh, she was on board with all of that. So that's just one example and that was just hair. So uh, that does not actually include things that happen with costumes. No. This was my first time working with Helen, so um, I, like, I didn't have any chance to know her before, but I was just so thrilled for, by my costumes because you know my character is a queen and um, <laughs> in my other play I play a refugee so I was just like yes bring on these beautiful costumes um, in the the first time you see Hermione she's wearing this um, gorgeous dress at, and it has these wings and when you li and when I ever I lift my arms there is this beautiful kind of gold silk um, that that flashes to the audience and um, and I just love, um, like you can tell that the clothes are loosely inspired by the Han Dynasty. A lot of our clothes have very long sleeves. They've got the wide neck collars. And, um, and I think the color, you know, the choosing the gold. And I guess my understanding is that black was a big color. But I think that because it's the winter's tale, you know, I mean, I'm just guessing, but that Helen wanted to go with the kind of this frosty silver that, and gray that we're all wearing, um, maybe to, you know, fit the time of season. And also, I just think also because she knew that the, you know, the stage, the Elizabethan is so brown, she knew that black was not going to be a, a great choice, so she went with something that was a little more, you know, fashionable, a la mode right now, a little silver gray, and uh, she is very fashion conscious, mm -hmm. actually, as a designer and fashion forward, frankly, and uh, that is part of her fun and her wit when she's designing. She is a great personality <laughs> in the fitting room and just as, a, as an artist when she's creating the costumes. And uh, I mean, definitely in 
secret love and peach blossom and she had a tremendous sense of humor about what different people would wear from the old hippies <laughs> who work on the show here in Ashland to uh, flow on a skateboard you know helping the Chinese touring troupe <laughs> come to fruition on their on their journey in that story so she uh, she really embodies a great sense of humor and also a tremendous intelligence for what is the passion and the uh, beautiful sort of poetic lines of the costumes in Winter's Tale. I will say that she certainly wants your feedback in terms of, Very is open. it comfortable? Mm -hmm. Can you move in this? In fact, Helen wants to see you move in everything that you wear. And so it's like you walk the runway. <laughs> or if, um, you know, I have this one nightgown that I wear. Uh, and, you know, she says, well, look, well, what happens in this scene? And I said, well, I'm getting thrown to the ground. And, dragged around and she's like will you just do that <laughs> I was like by myself okay <laughs> I just went <laughs> but she does she really takes a lot of time to watch how the stuff moves in the uh, fitting uh, mm -hmm. when you're walking to make sure that I know I know she ended up padding my first robe because she wanted me to look a little bit thicker and a little healthier so that when I got older I looked a little more frail and not quite as padded mm -hmm. out so mm -hmm. she really she really great attention to detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And very open and accommodating. Um, she had her specific vision, I think, for Winter's Tale and the color palettes that she picked. I think, and that really kind of got gets Cecilia as kind of a cohesive unit, whatever. And then, um, I play Antigonus, so I get killed by a bear. So I need clothing, like, uh, to move around in. So, like, like these guys were saying, you know, she makes sure, she's very open and very willing to make sure that you're comfortable in what you're wearing. There's this thing about all these things tying in together, yet each character has its own individual look, too. I'm part of the court, yet I don't look like anyone else on the court. The colors of my costume do, but... There's something very distinctly different as well as in the design. Mm -hmm. The silhouettes are quite different from one another even though the color palette is the same and you definitely get from Cecilia a sense of being uh, sort of locked up more tightly in a courtly, uh, more officious sort of way than uh, the incredible color splash among the lower classes in Bohemia but also you know, Polixenia's costume, uh, my costume in Bohemia are flowing robes and uh, very different from what uh, the feeling is in Sicily. And even when we get back to Sicilia at the end, right, there's a different feel to the costumes. The color palette opens up mm -hmm. into a more um, meditative white, uh, cream color. Cream, the robes are browns. looser flowing, mm -hmm. uh, and you sense that the country has gone through a change in mourning for the loss of the young prince and Hermione. And then she comes to life in this amazing dress. <laughs> that is, oh, I, can't, that I, can't, I can't ruin the surprise of that. If you haven't seen it yet, you have to buy a ticket and come I see what happens. See <laughs> if you remember the Olympics in Beijing and the drums light up when they're drumming on 10 million drums in the Olympic Stadium, that is a clue as to what might happen to a dress in Winter's Tale in Helen Huang's design. Mm. It's magic. Perfect.